Never give advice, always give options. Hi, I'm David Lowe, and welcome to today's sales tip. Right, as sales consultants, we gather knowledge and we call ourselves consultants, so sometimes we com we're compelled to give our buyers advice. I tell you, this is a mistake. Let me tell you a story. So, I needed uh, dress pants. I need some more dress pants for work, for train, for live train. I do, and I didn't want the, what I have always had, the dress wool pants. I wanted something more casual, quite frankly, something more hip, with today's style, more tapered, right? So like most buyers, where do you start shopping, right? I went online, most of us do that. It's real important, so I started narrowing down my choices online, and I found a company called Bonobus. They're an online uh, retailer, and I found a pair of pants that looked awesome, the description was good, the pictures were good, um, and so I thought, these are probably the right pants, but just like a car, Pants are very difficult to push a button and buy, right? If you buy the wrong one, it's a hassle to return them. So I wanted to try them on, so I wanted to find a store. And sure enough, bon Bonobos, I think it's called, Bonobos or Bonobos, I'm not sure, but they had a store in the fashion mall. And so this store, uh, you can't buy anything there. It's an interesting concept. It's a try-on store. So you go there, you get your size and try on, and they order you the stuff and it ships to your house. I thought, well, at least I can try them on make sure they fit. So I go in there and I walk in, I'm pretty excited. I got the little flyer and I, by the way, I downloaded their coupon uh, for a first purchaser and I went in there and said, I'd like to look at these pants. The guy says, rock and roll, man, I can help you with that. We've got the pants you can try on here. They were bright blue or something like that. So I gave him my size, he said, what size you are? And I said, 32, 30. He says, oh man, we don't have that size, but I, I get you 32, 32. So first of all, I didn't understand that. How can you have a try on store that doesn't have all the sizes, right? But I thought, whatever, I'll try them on. So I tried them on. The cut that I got, the slim cut, didn't work. There was some, it just didn't fit me right. And he says, man, you would fit the tailored cut. Great. Let me try those. So he got me bright blue pair of the tailored cut. Sure enough, I tried them on and I loved them. I love how they feel. I love the pockets. I love the clasp. I love the taper. These were the pants. I was totally committed. These are the pants. So I walk out of the dressing room and um, I, the gal comes up and says, how'd those work out for you? And I said, I, I love them. Uh, I'll take four pairs in black. And she says to me, right, ooh, man, our black isn't black. It's, I, I think our black is ugly. That was her response. And then she proceeded to prove it to me. She went and got a black sample and brought it over to me. See what I mean? It's not really black. And it wasn't. It's like a... I don't even know what it was, like a dusty black. It wasn't horrible, but I'm gonna tell you right now, when some young hot sales clerk tells you these are ugly, you're probably not gonna buy them. And I didn't. And so I said, oh man, I was disappointed. And she goes, well, we do have gray. And she pointed to this light gray pair of pants and I'm not wearing light pants. I was pretty disappointed. I thought I'd found my pants and I was in and out in 20 minutes. I hate them all. So I was, I was pretty excited to find those pants. And sure enough, there wasn't pants there for me. So. We spent the next hour roaming the mall, hated it. Saks, Nordstrom, all the men's stores, and all they had were chinos or dress pants. Every pant that I tried on was not good enough because what was I comparing it to? I was comparing it to the pair of pants I had mentally what? Already bought, I was a committed buyer, right? And I didn't want anything else, I wanted those pants. So I went home without pants. I decided to go online myself and I went online and went back to the Bonobus website and there was 20 color spots or whatever, a bunch of circles. And I noticed there was a color that was really dark. So I clicked on it and it looked almost black. It was their charcoal color. Now, why didn't she tell me about this charcoal color? So I decided to take a chance and I ordered those pants. And by the way, I got them and I love them, right? So what did she do wrong? I'll tell you what she did wrong. She gave me advice. Why did she give me that advice? I think, you know, once bitten, twice shy. Through her experience, she's probably ordered black pants for people, and what's happened? They brought them back, go, these aren't black, and they're not really, right? So their expectation of that deep black like my shirt wasn't met, and they were dissatisfied. So she decided in her infinite wisdom as a consultant to give me advice and tell me not to go that way and cost her store a sale, right? I bought them. I bought them online. I didn't buy them there. So she gave advice. She was compelled to give advice. And I was thinking going through this process that they would have lost the customer had I not gone back online. I was thinking about this process, thinking about what happens at the car lot. Are we given advice or are we given options, right? And I can think of some specific scenarios where I think salespeople feel compelled to give advice and I think it's costing you deals and costing you money. Let me give you one specific time in my life I can remember giving advice 
and wish I hadn't. A uh, customer drove a car, they were looking at a couple different cars, and we got done driving the car, and the customer said, yeah, we think it's too small, right? We love the car, but we think it's too small. We want to try the other one. And I said, <laughs> like in it, I've made, I've made more mistakes than you, I guarantee it. I've been doing this 34 years. And I've, I said to them, yeah, I knew that wouldn't be too small. It's too small for your family. Let's look at the other one. What did I do by doing that? I effectively eliminated coming back to that car. So we drove the other car, and the husband says, I don't like this car. I like the other car a lot more. And guess what happened? The wife repeated my words. I think it's too small for our family. And I lost a car deal. I can think, you ever done something like that? Where you told the buyer one was better than the other? When you do that, if they don't buy into your advice, you're probably costing yourself a deal. Now, let me tell you some scenarios. I, I think one of the biggest scenarios was when we present leasing to buyers, once we're trained on leasing, in fact, I traveled the country, most of you know, and trained dealers on leasing, and we made such a compelling argument for leasing, many salespeople became, um, um, you know, I, I love leasing, it's the only way to go. Who would go any other way, right? They became the super advocate for leasing, and they started telling their buyer this, I don't know who would buy a car, it doesn't make sense, it's dumb, you should lease a car because you get a lower payment, shorter term, you're less upside and they start giving advice. The problem is, if the customer isn't sold on that advice, you made it impossible for them to say yes to the thing you told them not to do. When you give advice, you eliminate options, right? So I would say, if the customer says, well, what do you think of leasing? I'd say, well, I think it's a great idea. A lot of my buyers love it. They get the shorter term, lower payment. They know they're not gonna be upside down in three years. They can get another car and they've got the gap covered. I think it's a great way to go, but I have also a lot of customers who buy the cars and are very happy. Which one looks best to you? Don't give them advice, give them what? Give them options, right? Listen, success is simple, right? The better we are and the more we do, the more, more we make. We do these sales tips to help you become better and think better. We know we can't cover every circumstance, but if you can develop these principles in your mind, you can apply them to the, 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 the situations you face every day. This is David Lowe, the Automotive Sales Coach, wishing you good selling.